Computer, please. Um, we're going to continue talking about the uh, immunity, and we we talked about vaccines, right? Now the next topic is to talk about T cells. We never covered T cells. Um, so just a, a quick a quick reminder. Okay, a quick reminder for you. Um, where do they start, T cells? So, okay, we have a bone marrow, okay. And then they go into the thymus, right? And the cells that go in the thymus are called naive T cells, okay. And in thymus, T cells learn to learn two things. Okay, um, did we talk about major histocompatibility complex? I don't. I don't think so. Okay, I kind of accidentally changed the order. It's fine. We we will. I will introduce general idea of T cells, and then we will talk about MHC. So T cells and thymus uh, have. They have to learn two lessons. Remember, we talked about B cells in the bone marrow. When they mature, they have to learn something. How to tell apart what? The self and the foreign. Correct? T cells. And B cells, can B cells directly recognize antigen? Yeah. Yeah, they can. They have a receptor, IgD, right? They can directly recognize antigen. That gets them activated. They become plasma cells, and they proliferate in the memory cells. Okay? Now, T cells cannot directly recognize antigen. For T cells, antigen has to be bound um, to so-called MHC. We'll, we'll get to MHC, major histocompatibility complex. So T cells have to learn two lessons. First they have to be able to recognize this MHC. I will explain what it is. And some cells will recognize it, okay, some cells won't. Since they have to recognize, what happens to those that cannot do that? They die, okay. And the ones that can Go to the second step, which is like in B cells, ability to distinguish self versus foreign. Does that make sense? So, and if yes, that's a good cell, right? If no, what happens to them? They die as well. Apoptosis. Um, so once they mature, where do they go? Hmm? Not yet. They wait. They, they survey. They're like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Those guys, where did they leave? What is the human sewage system? Lymphatic, yeah. They go into the lymphatics. Okay, so spleen and lymph nodes. And then the next step is not just exposure, but so-called antigen presentation. And when antigen is presented to T cells, they differentiate proliferate uh, antigen presentation presentation. They uh, differentiate, proliferate, and go into 
blood. Now, what is antigen presentation? This is something that where MHC molecules come in. Gonna move on? Okay. No? You wanna go back for a second? Okay. Huh? We good? You sure? I try to write as I talk, so that kind of paces me better. Major Hista, and remember, this PowerPoint is saved on the blackboard. So all these chicken scratches is there. Major Hista Compatibility Complex. I'm not going to explain the meaning of English words major and complex, but we need to figure out what does histocompatibility mean. Histo stands for tissue. Compatible? Well, that's kind of compatible, right? So the molecules of major histocompatibility complex uh, actually allow T cells to tell self from foreign. Now um, I'm gonna explain it's usually it is explained in a very confusing <laughs> Man, I will try to make it as simple as possible without dumbing it down. Okay. Let's first picture a normal cell. Inside of the cell is obviously a nucleus. And inside of the nucleus is the molecule of DNA. Does that make sense? When cell grows, what happens? Doesn't divide. I mean, grows. What does? What happens to the DNA? It gets first transcribed into RNA. Now I'm going to use all black. I will use color codes. Okay. RNA and then RNA is translated into into proteins. Okay. I deliberately put them in blue, so these are your normal proteins. These proteins are constantly chopped up. Does that make sense? They're fragments of your own proteins. Okay. By the way, pro your proteins, are they antigens? Generally. Yes, they are. They're not, they self-antigens. They are not, there's no immune response to them normally. But they're definitely antigens in terms of the category. Right? So these proteins get chopped in pieces. And then comes the major histocompatibility complex. So, so MHC, it binds these protein pieces and presents them on the surface of the cell. There are two classes of MHC. <clears throat> so this is MHC class 1. So essentially, it looks like this. If I'm a normal cell and I produce blue proteins, I show the blue antigen on my surface, which signals I'm fine. I am self, I am not infected, I am not cancerous, I'm fine. Does that make sense? What happens if cell becomes infected? Let's take a glance. MHC 
You have a cell. You have a nucleus. DNA. And all the same events occur. But now you have, let's say, a virus. Okay? Will virus produce its own proteins inside of the cell? Yes, it needs it for transcription. So eventually, virus will make its own proteins. And these proteins is the result, this proteins, the result of virus replication will get chopped up. And your MHC class 1 will present them on the surface. Does it make sense? So if I'm infected, instead of normal antigen, I present some kind of a foreign antigen, which signals to the immune system, I am not self anymore. I'm infected. I'm cancer. Something is wrong with me. Kill me. Does that make sense? That's literally a signal for kill me. There's no cure. There's only only destruction. Right? Now I mentioned obviously if there is class one, there should be class two. Class two is a little so class one, let's write write something about it. MHC class 1 can be found on all nucleated cells. Any cell of your body, T cell, B cell, macrophage, um, megakaryocyte, hepatocyte, neuron, you name it, <coughs> every cell has the MHC class 1. So every cell, in case it becomes wrong, it becomes infected, can throw the flag signaling that it has to be destroyed. Does that make sense? So the red blood cells wouldn't have it. Red blood cells wouldn't have it. Platelets wouldn't have it. Okay? That makes sense? Good. MHC class 2, on the other hand, can be found only on antigen presenting cells. What do they do, antigen presenting cells? What do they do? We, we'll get you're right, but what do they do? They they they, they present that no, they don't not to B cells. Remember, I told you T cells have to be presented with antigen. So antigen presenting cells, surprise, present the antigen to the T cells. Okay, there are three antigen presenting cells: dendritic. I use acronym DC macrophages, and B cells. Do you follow me so far? Now, what is so spectacular, what is so special about MHC class 2? It acquires antigen in a different way. As you can see, in MHC class 1, <clears throat> sorry, antigen is endogenous. What does the word endogenous mean? From within. It comes from within the cell. It is produced by the cell. Whether it's a normal or pathogenic antigen, the foreign antigen, it comes from inside of the cell. Does that make sense? MHC class 2 presents exogenous antigen. So here what happens? You have 
say, a dendritic cell that engulfs... Wait, I'm going to make it a little smaller. Otherwise, just a little smaller. Um, it's a gross misrepresentation of dendritic cell because dendritic cell looks like a, a, a starfish all spiky and everything so it's just you know I was offered an appointment in the art department at Lakeland but I declined because my talent is too high for them um, anyway and this red dot is the pathogen say a bacteria okay so dendritic cell engulfs bacteria and breaks it in pieces. Does that make sense? There's no replication, it just destroys it. And then pieces of bacteria, they bind to MHC class 2. Say it's a bacteria or a virus. What do you think the role of the dendritic cell will be then? If it breaks down something and presents on its surface, there's no infection involved. And presents it to T cells. Huh? D uh, dendritic cell? No. No. It presents to T cells. What does it do? So T cells get trained. The dendritic cell says to say T cell, this is what you have to look for. This is how the bad guy looks like. So go into everywhere find the bad guys and destroy them does that make sense it's a sort of a coach okay does that make sense so the main so dendritic cells are the main function for dendritic cells is to quote unquote train T cells make them recognize the antigen does that make sense? Is that clear? We'll get to macrophages and B cells. In terms of so D uh, dendritic cells, they play almost the the exclusive role in forcing T cells to mature. In 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 not not even mature, enforcing T cells to activate. Does that make sense? So it's a, if I am, if I'm the dendritic cell and say Jamie is, is a T cell that's mature but doesn't know what to look for, then it's going to be me who will show you what to look for. Not macrophage, not B cells, it's going to be me. We good? We'll get, we're getting there. We're getting there. What they can do, we're getting there. Okay. Now, going back to, going back to T cells. Okay. There are two big populations of T cells. Wait, I'm probably have a something with a brain. Uh, CD4 and CD8 populations of T cells. For two different populations of T cells. Um, I, it's fairly easy, well, in my opinion, to use the analogy of the football players. Because football players have fairly strictly assigned positions. Okay, so like in the, uh, they have, like in, on the defense, you have linebackers and you have safety. Okay, on the offense, you have offensive line and you have like running backs. So CD4 and CD8 cells 
have fairly different roles in the immune response. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, if you ask me what CD means, I don't remember. I, I think it may be cellular determinant. It's pretty much a certain molecule on the surface of the cell. Okay, I I knew it for like five seven minutes once in my life and then I totally forgot and I was too lazy to look it up every time I want to look it up I cannot okay but the point is those CD CD4 CD8 they're like CD CD 132 on some cells it's it's a molecules on the surface that define the population okay like we say if you look at um, If you look at South America, people from Argentina visually are different from people from Brazil, different from people from, I don't know, Peru, okay? Just the facial, the facial characteristics, right? That pretty much comes to, to CD4, CD8 cells. So when cells, the CD4 and CD8 cells get activated. We're going to start with CD8 because that's simple. Activation leads to uh, CD8 cells becoming cytotoxic lymphocytes. Often when people say uh, CD8 cells they directly refer to cytotoxic lymphocytes. The acronym for them is CTL or a jargon T killers. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Clusters of different clusters of differentiation. I knew it for five minutes, like fourteen years ago. Um, now, of course, they also form memory CD8 cells. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, CD4 cells are more exciting. Upon activation, There are several outcomes for them. Uh, in the broad strokes, they can form uh, T helper cells. They can form T regulatory cells. And they can form, well, and they, of course, will form memory. CD4 cells. <coughs> that makes sense. <clears throat> okay. Um, not surprisingly. Now, when I say activation, it means that dendritic cell presents the antigen. Does it make sense? Now, all these cells they are together called effector cells. You understand why they called effector? What's the reason behind that name? Because they produce certain effect. Okay, those are all effector cells. That makes sense? You follow me so far? Well, let's see what they can do. Oh, oh, one important thing I forgot to mention. They turn out to recognize different types of MHC molecules. CD8, they recognize. MHC class 1 and CD4 
recognize MHC class 2. And this different recognition is called MHC restriction. Yes. That's a great question. I, I was waiting for it. The brief answer is not then. Where are MHC class 1? All nucleated cells. Is the dendritic cell nucleated? I'm a, is it? The dendritic cell. Yes, it is nucleated cell. So the dendritic cell, does it have MHC class 1? What else does it have? MHC class 2. So these cells have both. Dendritic cells, macrophages, B cells have both class 1 and class 2. Um, I'm not going to ask this. Don't worry. I mean, I, I want to explain the idea. I'm not going to ask this, I promise. But antigen presenting cells have both types of MHC. Does that make sense? So when CD8 cell gets trained, it still sees the antigen on the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell shows it. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't take my shoes off and try to use my leg as an example of MHC class 1 and my arm as MHC class 2. Okay? It still shows the antigen. Okay, my right arm is MHC class 1. So I show it to the CD8 cell. My left arm is MHC class 2 and I show it to CD4 cell. And I'm dendritic cell. Does that make sense? Because CD8 cell can only recognize MHC class 1. Getting So let's move to what they do. Okay? Just You will get the, ans the answer in a second. So we have CD8 cell, the killer cell, okay? And we have a cell that is infected. Say it is hepatocyte, so it's nucleated cell nucleus. So this nucleated cell presents the foreign antigen using what molecule? This infected cell. MHC1, right? So CD8 cell can now recognize it using how should I call this fork-shaped molecule? Receptor. It's called T-cell receptor. Okay. So TCR stands for T-cell. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. MHC1. Yes, all of them, except red blood cells and platelets. It flags, it throws the flag using MHC1. So T cell, killer cell, can recognize this flag and kill it. Because CD8 cell can only recognize MHC class 1. Does that make sense? It's the same. It's a lymphocyte. Lymphocyte is like a class of the cells. All T and B cells are lymphocytes. When they differentiate, we call them T killers when they can kill. We can say yes. So they would that by the cell Uh-huh. 
MHC one. Oh, on the right, yes, it's infected cell, or as any nucleated cell, it has molecule of MH molecules of MHC class one that will throw out the red flag, saying that it's infected. Does that make sense? Um, let me let me pause the recording. If I would have signs, I'm going to make signs. You will have to hold the sign, though. Okay, okay. We'll get we'll get to the recognition of the um, MHC. But now let's talk about the CD8 roles. A CD4 role, sorry. So you have a CD4 cell, which can recognize only MHC class 2. Does that make sense? Which cells have MHC class 2? Antigen presenting cell, dendritic cells, B cells, macrophages. Now, I used to be a dendritic cell. My role is to teach T cells. Okay? What are the functions of B cells and macrophages? What's the function of B cell? Become plasma cells that will produce antibodies. What's the function of macrophage? To phagocytos. Now let's see what CD4 cells can do. They also have a T cell receptor. But now, let's say it's the B cell that presents the antigen on its surface as a component of MHC class 2. CD4 cells doesn't kill anything. CD4 cell, upon this interaction, will increase, will additionally activate B cell. Does that make sense? It's going to kick it up a notch. Yes? Yes. Yes, exactly. That B cells are doing their job right. They, they push them to produce more antibodies, right? To become plasma cells and produce antibodies. That makes sense. You're absolutely right. Okay? They make sure that B cells do their job. So that will lead to increased antibody production. Um, it's kind of a double check system, okay? Is this the right, yeah, is this the right engine? Yeah, go ahead and start making antibodies. Macrophages that will also present antigen on the surface will also get a kick out of the CD4 cells and will receive that activation stimuli. Now, when we say activation of macrophages, what's going to increase? Which process is going to be more? Phagocytosis, yeah. So increased phagocytosis. And last but not least, turns out CD4 cells produce cytokines that stimulate the activation of CD8 cells. Not through the receptor, not through like the direct interaction with antigen or MHC though. Now look at this again. On this scheme, which cell actually kills the infected one? Huh? CD8. Yes? Yes. No, it's just in parallel. So the picture, it, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, B cells first, macrophages second, CD8 third. It all happens at the same time. Does that make sense? We, we get to the, to the analogies eventually. 
So CD8 cell actually kills the infected epithelial cells, fibroblasts, I don't know. I ran out of cells. Okay, but it kills the cells. CD4 cell doesn't doesn't kill anything, right? What does it do instead? It tells other cells to be more active. I compare CD4 cell to a football coach. Football coach doesn't get on the field, but he tells other players what to do. Can a team play without a coach? Yes. I think it was three seasons ago. Saints were stripped of their coach. It was a disaster. Okay? They played, you know, without a head coach. If the team gets the head coach back, they play much better. Does that make sense? Because now CD4 cells increases the B cell activation, macrophage activation, and CD8 cells activation. Yes, yes. Doesn't do anything, yes. What's the point of, like, I don't understand what's the point of C4 saying activating C8 because C8 can only do MHC1, whereas what is it, MHC2? So, of those. It's the same antigen. It's the same antigen. It's just. The same antigen is presented by CD by MHC1 and MHC2, just presented to different to two different cells. It's sort of a safe mechanism to prevent the effects from being crossed over. Does that make more sense now? Does that make more sense? Why MHC1? Why MHC2? There's a disease which destroys CD4 cells. Mm -hmm. And you can think, come on, it's just one type of cells. If you have no CD4 cells, it's going to happen to B cells. They will, but they're going to be lousy. The levels of antibodies will drop. Macrophages will be largely inactive. CD8 cells, yeah, will become, well, it will be pretty much, an, it's a term, anergic. So they will not recognize, they will not kill anything. So you knock out one member of the immunity family, right? And look, the, adapt, the cellular immunity falls apart. The humoral immunity, B cells, falls apart. And innate immunity falls apart. Essentially, CD4 cells is the link that connects adaptive and innate humoral and cellular immunity. Does that make sense? That's it's really an important, an important conclusion here. Yes. Good. It's helper T cell. Yes. There is there are multiple subtypes of helper T cells. Okay. There are multiple subtypes that have more specified functions. Um, some of them activate macrophages more, some of them produce more inflammatory cytokines, some of them stimulate more of a B cell response. I always mix up, there's one and two, like TH1 is inflammatory cytokines, TH2 is antibodies. Don't worry about that. Oh, you have to kill. Like, try to play without quarterback. Coach can dance jig on the sideline, but if you don't have a quarterback, nobody's going to throw the ball, right? So that's the, it's a quarterback. Macrophages are not really specific. CD8 cell is highly targeted. Does that make sense? Try to imagine the center throwing the ball. It's going to be all over the field. Now, how they kill the cell? CD, CD8 cells. Do not uh, phagocytose, okay? We talked about NK cells before, natural killer cells. They do apoptosis. CD8 cells do apoptosis as well. And the mechanism is the same. There are t 
two options. Option one is fast ligand and fast receptor. Okay? When they match, it leads to apoptosis. Another great way is to produce perforins. What do perforins do? Huh? Puncture, yeah. Perforate, okay? So they form a pore, and then um, granzymes enter the infected cell and also cause apoptosis. Does that make sense? Um, it's pretty much fast ligand, fast receptor interaction, fast L, fast R, and second perforin granzyme system. Does that make sense? How would you differentiate the, the protein from the NK cell? NK cell is rather non So uh, there is actually an assay. Um, I, I can't tell you like the numbers in this say, but the idea of this say, if you, let's say you want to see if your experimental animal, say a mouse, develops CD8 cells, killer cells, specific killer cells, when you immunize the mouse with an antigen. So you stick the antigen into the mouse, wait for some time, then sacrifice the animal, take the spleen, crush it, and isolate T cells. It's pretty crude isolation, but it's still, it's T cells. Now, they mature, they're in the spleen, okay? But in order to start doing something, they at least they have to see the that blah, 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 blah. the antigen yes so what you can do you can take another mouse inject it with the same antigen and give this mouse those T cells uh, the dritic cells will present the antigen to T cells and you can see activation um, you can see the the T cells migrating into the site of injection killing another way is to have a culture of cells infected with the same antigen, covered with the same antigen. And then you can see if T cells get activated. Specifically, so you can see that they get activated. So there is a way to tell them apart. Does that make sense? Not really? Yeah, but not quite the direction I was looking for. So, uh -huh. um, if you're comparing TRAS to killer T to the NK, yes. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, misunderstood. NK cells um, do not have that degree of specificity. So NK cells will, will find the mismatch between self-antigen on MHC and any foreign antigen on MHC. And they will kill not specifically. T cells, the killer cells, will only recognize, for instance, killer cells that were exposed to influenza antigen will kill only cells that are infected with influenza. Does that make sense? Okay. Good. Uh, we're going to go for a break. And